I have been excited about Ted Betty Parks for a little while. I, I got to see it at Gamma and I actually gave it my award for most beautiful game at Gamma because look at that. It just looks gorgeous. I love the theme. I love the art. You know, you are basically trying to build an amusement park, but it's not like a modern Six Flags. Do, 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 do. No, this is like an old timey theme park. You know, this is. It comes with this big old circus tent. You got to put the circus tent together right there. And you put the circus tent in the middle of the board. Boom. Right there. There's the circus tent spot. Oh my God. I've ruined it. No, that's where it goes. Okay. So I'm just starting to punch out early right now. And one of the other cool things about the game is you're doing tile placement, you know, where you're putting rides and things like that into your park. But you, the, the difference between this and most tile placement games is you don't want any of your, of your stuff to touch. It's tile placement where, you know, you want, the, you want the tiles to never come near each other. If they touch, you've just killed some people, all right? There's trees you gotta clear to, like, build out your land. Don't you want to go on hover racers? Hover racers? They're, they're race cars that don't even touch the ground. Wild Gulch. I don't know what's in there. I know it's wild, and that gets me hyped. Sherlock Case Connection. This is a, uh, you know, a light detective style game, and it is a light detective style game for two to four players. <laughs> that is probably the largest I've ever seen that written on the box, the, on a box. They want you to know that this is a game for two to four players. You cannot forget that only two, three, or four players can play this game. So, you know, in the game you are visiting locations to gather evidence. You are using evidence to connect threads and then trying to, uh, you know, solve some stuff and become a detective. So, this is like, I said this is a detective game, but it's a detective game that plays a little bit shorter than a lot of them, that's a little bit easier to introduce to newer people, that sort of thing. This is a game you can play in 30 minutes. And, you know, look, the rule book is only uh, three pages right there. You don't count as a page, Benedict. All the artwork is just photos from the show. So if you have... You know, if, you, if you're a fan of the Benedict version of Sherlock Holmes and, uh, and you want, you know, or you know somebody that is a fan of that, well, that's all this game. You are just, it's just these cards. You know, it's quite a, quite a large box <laughs> for just uh, some cards and some tokens and stuff like that. But, you know, they really want you to know that it's for two to four players and you can't write that that big if it's a small box, okay? This is, this is important for people to know. QE is an auction game, but the trick of the game, the difference in this game and other auction games, is there is no limit to how much you can spend. You can put down whatever number you want, and so the prices escalate for things throughout the game. You know, things get more and more expensive as you find that you can just bid whatever you want. But if you're the company that bids the most during the, the game, you actually can't win. So I just think that's a funny concept, right? Where you could just, money is no object, bid whatever you want, you know? This game is as if like Jeff Bezos is bidding on something. Money is no object. How much do you think a Twinkie costs, Jeff Bezos? I don't know, $5,000? Yeah, I bet you would say that. You have no idea what real life is like. You're going to space, dog. That's how much you don't know what real life is like. You're going to space. If you want to write down a billion dollars in a game, if you want to bid a billion dollars on something, if you want to bid a trillion dollars on something, if you want to bid a quadrillion dollars, play this game. I don't know what's after quadrillion, but you can do that one too. There's no limit. Shobu is a game that I've wanted for a while and I finally got it. Uh, this game, you know, look at that. This game just looks classy. I don't even know if I'm going to play it. I just want it in my collection to make me look smart. Okay? This is a game that makes you look smart. I'm tricking people who come over to my house that think I'm a classy individual. This is a, uh, it's an abstract game that feels uh, like a classic game. You know, it feels like a, 
like a chess or, or, or like a backgammon or something like that, but it is a modern game. I mean, look at these components. Big old wood boards right there. These are stones. They went and stole these from a garden to put them in this game, okay? That's how much they care about classy components. They stole stones from a garden. It's a, there's a rope, you know, you can use it as a bracelet, wear it around to let everybody know you're a real shobu head. You know, this is this bracelet is like, yo, dog, I play shobu. Anybody out there sees it and they're like, you want to play right now? Because it is a two-player game. You just need one person to see you with it and say you want to play and you can have a game. Air, land, and sea. With our powers combined, we are Captain Planet. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be disrespectful here. Uh, the full title is Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies. And I expect you to say that every time you pull out this game. Hey, does anybody want to play Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies? Yes, I would like to play Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies. Okay, I'll set up Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies. Great, I can't wait to play Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies. So this is a standalone game. Air, Land, and Sea is a game that already exists. And this is what's called a standalone expansion. So you can... Uh, play it by itself. You don't need the other game or you can, I don't, maybe you can combine them. I don't even know how that works, but you know, it's a nice little small box game. It's an area control game where you are trying to control air. You're trying to control land. You're trying to control sea and you're trying to do it with spies, lies, and supplies. So that's all there is to it. You can take this anywhere.